بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تؤسر وتامي بالخير question number 11 اقرأ المثالين ثم أكمل الجمل الآتية بوضع غال أو غالية في الأماكن الخالية now we have to read the two examples اقرأ المثالين ثم أكمل then complete أكمل الجمل الآتية the following sentences بوضع by putting وضع يضع وضع that means to put غال أو غالية في الأماكن الخالية uh, the noun غال or غالية in the blanks now you might be uh, thinking or you can see over here here we have غال and here we have غاليتون. So I have a question. What's the Arab or status of غالن? And what's the status of غاليتون in these two nouns? Any idea? Now, if you look at غالن, you might be thinking that غالن is majroor, right? Because we know ضمتان, uh, فتحتان, and كسرتان. So when we have ضمتان, that is marfu. And when we have fathatan, it is mansub. And when we have kasratan, it is majroor. Okay, so now this is a special kind of noun that is called ismul manqus, a defective noun. And this noun is very special. Why? Because when it is marfu and when it is majroor, it will end with kasratan. So when it is marfu and when it is majroor, and then the case ending will be kasratan. Now look at the examples. هذا القلم غال أصله غالي. So هذا القلم will be subject, and we know that subject is marfu, and غال is predicate, and we know that خبر or predicate is also marfu. Now both of them are marfu. هذا القلم is easy to figure out that it is marfu because it ends with dhamma. So that's fine. But غالن ends with kasratan. So how is it marfu? Now, just to know this, how it is marfu, first of all, we need to know that the original form is غاليون. What is the original form? Original form, غاليون. It is basically on the pattern of فاعلون. Any noun that comes on the pattern of فاعلون, that means it is the doer of the action or a small file. For example, عابدون, ماجدون, ساجدون. So, any noun that comes on the pattern of fa'ilun, that means it is doer. So here it is also on the pattern of fa'ilun, ghaliyun, but some changes have to take place. What are the changes? Dhamma is heavy on ya. When we talk about ya, not ya al mutakallim when we talk about ya, when it is the part of the root letter, then what happens? Yama is, dhamma is heavy on ya. Why? Because we know that ya is the sister of kasra. In Arabic, uh, ya is considered as, kasra is considered as the sister of ya. Similarly, fatha is considered as the sister of alif, and dhamma is considered as the sister of wow. As we know that we have uh, like bu, and then we have ba, and then we have b. As we know that there are three long vowels, and ba, uh, wow is compatible with dhamma. Uh, Alif is compatible with Fatha and Ya is compatible with Kasra. So Ya doesn't really like to have Dhamma on it. So what happens uh, when we, we have to remove Dhamma? So when Dhamma is removed, it takes away Ya. So what happens when Dhamma is removed? Ya is also removed. So two changes will take place. Dhamma is removed because it's heavy on Ya. And Ya is removed. Why Ya is removed? Let's see over here. It is removed and it is replaced with kasratan. So basically, uh, ya has been removed with kasratan, which is called compensatory tanween, or in Arabic we call it al tanweenu al iwadu, compensatory tanween. So basically, ghaliyun has changed into ghalin. I've tried my level best to explain it. However, if you find it difficult, no, no problem. Just wait for the verbs when we start. And inshallah, when we proceed into this book, um, when we start learning the verbs, you will inshallah get a very clear idea. Now this uh, ya comes back. In some certain conditions, it has to come back. 
when does it come back? Ya returns in the following cases when ta marbuta is connected to it. So when ta marbuta is connected to it, then ya comes back. The original noun is ghalin. And when you want to say something that is the feminine of this, so it will be ghaliyatun. Ghalin, ghaliyatun. Uh, similarly, if you say hadin, hadiyatun. Uh, similarly, if you say uh, wadin, it will be wadiyatun. So any noun that is manqus or defective noun, when, when tamar buta is added to that, then ya comes back. So you remember the ya that was dropped from here? When tamar buta was added to it, it came back. So this is the first condition when ya comes back. Uh, the second condition is when the noun is mansub or when it is used as mudaf. These two conditions we know already. So when the noun is mansub or it is used as mudaf, then the ya comes back. And the next condition is when al is added to that, and then also ya comes back. And in this lesson, our focus is only uh, to see that when ya comes back is only the case when uh, tamar buta is added to that. You know, you know, you might be thinking like, it's, it might be some extra information, but uh, that's how we learn. First of all, you have to have some idea about something. Now your only responsibility is to try to figure out this idea. How to implement it? Inshallah, we will implement it when we proceed further into the course. Now we have to uh, provide the answers. So you want to say al kutubul arabiyatu So what should we use over here? Ghalin aw ghaliyatun. What should we use? Yes, please tell me quickly. Al Kutubul Arabiyatu, Ghalin, or Ghaliyatun, Fi Baladina. What will be the answer? The answer will be Ghaliyatun. Why Ghaliyatun? Because we know that Al Kutub is Ghairu uh, Aqil. The plural of Ghairu Aqil is considered a singular, singular feminine. That's why we will say Ghaliyatun. Hadha al Kitabu Rakhisun, Wadaka. This book is cheap and that is expensive. What should we use here? Ghalin or Ghaliyatun? Ghalin, excellent. So because Kitab, as we know, it's masculine. So that's why this is a subject and the predicate is also masculine. This dictionary is 100 riyals. What should we use? Ghalin or Ghaliyatun? Ghalin, excellent. Uh, it is expensive. This bag, now you want to say this bag is uh, is expensive. So how will we say? Excellent. Yes, this bag is expensive. Question number 12. Read two examples. Then read the following sentences. بعد ذلك أكتبها مع كتابة الأعداد الواردة فيها بالحروف. بعد ذلك after that أكتبها write it and ها refers to the جمل sentences. مع كتابة الأعداد by writing the numbers or the عدد الواردة the following so عدد will be مصوف الواردة will be صفة فيها in it بالحروف with the letters. So now we have to change or we have to write the numbers into letters, the Arabic letters, I mean. So, miyatu rajulin wa miyatu imratin. Now we have to learn two numbers. We have to learn 100 and 1000. What is so special about these two numbers? Number one, these numbers are always used as mudaf. Always used as mudaf. That's number one. And uh, this is called adad and ma'dud is always mudaf ilayh. That's number one. Ma'dud is always mudafileh, that's number one. And number two, ma'dud is always mufrad. Yani ma'dud is always single. Yani mufrad, always single. So uh, whether it is masculine or feminine, doesn't matter. Uh, the ma'dud or the, the thing that is being counted, that has to be singular. So miyatu rajulin, miyatu maratin, 100 women, 100 men and 100 women. In English, of course, we will say men and women, but in Arabic, the noun has to be singular. And the same goes to 1000. Alfu rajulin wa alfum ratin. So we know that the Hamza of Imra is Hamza al wasl. So when we read it, we connect it. So we will say alfum ratin, uh, which sounds a little bit, uh, you know, like uh, awkward, but 
we can say alf imratin min ghairi al-Quran min duni al-Quran. If it's regular Arabic, it's okay to say alf imratin. However, of course, in the Quran, then we have to connect it. Like wamraatuhu hamalat al-hatab. In the Quran, we have to connect it. Alf imratin, one thousand women. So the two numbers, they take the noun as madud as singular noun. Okay, هذا التلفاز ب 1000 ريال. So you want to say this television is 1000 ريالز. So how will we say? هذا التلفاز ب 1000 ريال. Right? ب 1000 ريال. This TV is 1000 ريالز. عندي 1000 دولار. So how will we say? عندي 1000 دولار. Right? عندي 1000 دولار. And we know that Indi is a dharf plus mudafile, so it is khabar, and alfu dularin is subject or mubtadawan. Uh, so we have the wrong answer over here. Next is fi had al kitabi 100 safha. So how will we say fi had al kitabi miyatu safhatin? Excellent. Uh, we will say so there is another mistake over here fi had al kitabi. Uh, it will be miyatu safhatin. Bikam hadhi al-haqibatu hiya. How much is this bag? So now you want to say it's 1,000 riyals. So we will say hiya, <clears throat> sorry, miya. So it's hiya bi miyati riyalin. It's 100 riyals. All right. So finally, we get the correct answer over here. Next is fi hadhi al-kulliyati 100 talib min Pakistan. In Pakistan, 100 Talib in Indonesia. So now you want to say in this college, there are 100 students from Pakistan and 100 students from Indonesia. So how will we say? Fi hadhi al-kulliyati, miyatu Talibin, miyatu Talibin min Pakistan, wa miyatu Talibin min Indonesia. One more thing we need to know about Mia. This Alif is called Alif al-Zaida. This alif is extra alif. It is written because it's the Arabic language. It's written over here, but it is not pronounced. So in some, or if you talk about the mushaf, that is basically Indopak mushaf. So, so miyatun or miyatu will be written like this. So there are two possibilities. It is written with alif and it is also written without alif. So it can be like this miyatu and it can be like this as well. Two possibilities are there. Like in ulaika, in ulaika, wow is zaida. In ulaika, wow is not pronounced. We know that, right? So similarly, in miyatu, alif is zaida. There are like some words in Arabic language where there is an extra letter, and that's for a reason. Silent letters, yes. Kawin <clears throat> make jumalan sentence. Mustamilan by using al kalimat al atiyati the following words. So use each of the following words in a sentence. So we have the first one, vakiyun, uh, that means intelligent, miyatun, 100, mutazawwijun, married, azabun, single, or unmarried, khulukun, uh, someone who possesses good manners, well mannered, dularun, dollars, and ghalin, expensive. Now it's up to you to just write down as many sentences as you can. For example, you want to say, I am intelligent. So you will say, ana dhakiyun. And if you are a feminine, you will say, ana dhakiyatun. And similarly, indi miyatu dularin. And if you are married, you can say, ana mutazawwijun. And if you are not married, you will say, ana azabun. And similarly, if you want to use khulukun, so you can say, ana dhu khulukin. And indi miyatu dularin wa hadal kitabu ghalin. I have the answers here as well. So it's up to you. You can write down the answers that we have over here. For example, Bilal and Talibun Vakiyun. Bilal is an intelligent student. Hadal Kitabu Bimiyati Rialin. This book is 100 Rials. Amutazawijun Anta Am Azabun. Right? Are you married? So this is incomplete sentence. Amutazawijun Anta. Or just as we can say, if this is just a simple question. Ana Azabun, I am unmarried or I am single. Ibrahimu Dhu Khulukin, Ibrahim possesses good manners. Kamdularin, Kamdularin, right? Kamdularin, why? Indaka Alana, how many dollars do you have now? Because after Kam, 
the noun must be singular, mansub and nakira. هذا القلم غالٍ. This book or this pen is expensive. هذا القلم غالٍ. This pen is expensive. Now let's have a look at some of the examples of the ideas that we have learned in the beginning of the lesson from the Quran. And if you remember, I told you in the beginning of these lessons that if you can remember one example of one rule that you're learning from the Quran, that will be really helpful. So for inna, uh, we have this example, inna Allah ghafoorur rahim. Indeed, Allah is all forgiving and merciful. So here we can see that after inna, the noun is mansub and it is called ismu inna and uh, khabar is called khabaru inna and ghafurun and rahimun. These are the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُنْ نَفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ أَثَارِهِمْ Surah Al-Kahf, I don't remember the verse number. So فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُنْ نَفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ أَثَارِهِمْ So here we have the example of لَعَلَّكَ and we know that ka is the attached pronoun and whenever the attached pronoun comes with inna wa khawatuha it will be the ism of that that noun so we have la'allaka so ka will be ismu la'alla and bakhiyun will be khabaru la'alla in the rest of the sentence perhaps you so if you remember we i told you that excuse me that in the quran la'allaka is translated as perhaps but it can give the meaning of fear or hope uh, in everyday life. But when we talk about the Quran, then it is translated as perhaps or so that. Then we have Now we can see the example of 100 years and now we can see that uh, sixth ayah of Surah Kahf Umi Muhammad. Thank you very much. Barakallahu um, fiki. So this is verse number six of Surah Kahf. Okay. So we have over here فَأَمَاتَهُ اللَّهُ مِيَتَ عَامٍ So we can see over here that مِيَتَ uh, is used as مُضَاف and عَامٍ is مُضَاف إِلَيْهِ and it is singular and it is مَجْرُور So Allah caused him to die for a hundred years. Then we have the example of ألف ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر Now we can see here that after ألف we can see the noun is singular and it is majroor so one example of mia one example of alf and then one example of la'allaka and one example of inna of course there are many examples of these uh, in the quran but if we can remember initially one example inshallah will be enough for us the night of decree is better than a thousand months so here we have mia ta'amin and here we have alfi shahar and we know that mudaf the ending of mudaf uh, will change. It can be marfu, mansub, or majroor. But mudaf ilayh is always majroor. For example, here miyata is used as, um, uh, since it's a, it's time, it's dharf, so dharf is uh, used as mansub, that, that's, uh, we can remember it easily. And also we can say that this is uh, al-maf'ul al-thani. Fa'amatahu, so who is al-maf'ul al-awwal, and miyata amin is Al-Maf'ul al-Thani because Amata Yumitu Imatatan requires two objects. It requires two objects and Lafzul Jalala is the subject and uh, Amata is the verb and uh, who is the first object and Miyata Amin is the second object. Also, if you take it as a dharf, as, as a time, adverb of time, and we know that adverb of time is also mansub. And here alfi is majroor because of min, harf min, and we know that uh, mudaf can be marfu, mansub, or majroor, but mudaf ilayh is always majroor. Examples of dhu uh, from the Quran. So we have more examples. Wallahu dhul fadlil azim. Allah is the possessor of great bounty. So we know that dhu is translated as, as possessor or having. Similarly, we have وَرَبُّكَ الْغَفُورُ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ Again, we have uh, in, and thy Lord or your Lord is the forgiver, honor of mercy. وَرَبُّكَ الْغَفُورُ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ So here it is marfu because it is uh, khabar. And here it is also marfu because it is khabar. 
كذبت قبلهم قوم نوح وعاد وفرعون ذو الأوتاد. Here it is of you being used for Fir'aun and uh, the honor of the stakes. The people of uh, Nuh denied alayhi salam before them and the tribe of Ad and Pharaoh, the honor of stakes. So here it's being used for um, for Fir'aun. So Fir'aun is marfu, so Adhu is also marfu. Fiha fakihatun wan nakhlu dhatul akmam. So here we have Dhatu, as we know that Dhatu is a feminine of Dhu, and it is being used as a Sifa of Nakhlu. Nakhlu is Mosuf, Dhatu is Sifa. Or we can simply say Fiha uh, Fakihatun, Fakihatun wa Nakhlu. Yeah, so Mosuf and Sifa. So uh, uh, there in is fruit and palm trees having a seed of dates. وَيَبَقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ so again, we have a du over here, ikram. So, and there will remain the face of your Lord, honor of majesty and uh, of uh, majesty and honor. So here, a uh, du is being used yabqa wajhu rabbika. So here it's used as a uh, sifa of waj wajhu rabbika dhul jalali wal ikram. That's why it is marfu. Sayasla naran that alahab. And here it's. Uh, uh, being used for lahab. So here that is feminine. Why it's feminine? Any ideas? Yes, anyone? Why that is used here as feminine? Why not thu? Uh, because it's being used as the sifa of nar. Yes, nar is feminine and nar is uh, mansub and that is also mansub. So yes, la nar that lahab. Excellent. Because as we know that uh, thu can be used as it is used as mudaf mudafila and also it can be used as sifa. So it's being used as a sifa of nar, and we know nar in Arabic is feminine. The vocab, you already have it, so um, it's always important to memorize and learn the, the vocab. Very, very important. So we have learned dhu, the possessor or to possess, and the plural of dhu is dhu. Thatu is the feminine of thu, and the plural of thatu is thawatu. Khulukun, manner, and the plural of khulukun is akhlaqun. Then we have am, that is used to ask a question, interrogative question, and au is used in the sentences that are non-interrogative. Do, do you remember example of am from the Quran I gave you? Aanzartahum. Am lam tunzirhum, right? So we have uh, we have many examples of am in the Quran. Uh, so if you remember one example uh, from the Quran, and the example I think of aw that I gave you was khud uh, hada aw dhaka, take this or take that. Expensive means ghalin. Then we have mutazawwijun, married, and mutazawwijatun, married for masculine, and this is for feminine, tamar buta as we know. Nasraniyun. Christian and the plural of Nasraniyun is Nasara, Christians. Yehudiyun, Jew, and the plural of Yehudiyun is Yehudun. So it's very important for us to memorize the plural as well. Azabun, unmarried, and the plural is Azabun. Then we have Warakun, and we know the plural of Warakun is Aurakun. Ghaliyatun, expensive, it's used for the feminine. Ghalin is used for the masculine. Rakhisun is the opposite of Ghaliyatun, cheap, and Rakhisatun is the feminine of Rakhisun. Miyatun, hundred, alfun, thousand, and we know that Miyatun and alfun are always used as mudaf. So whenever they are used, they will be light without tanween. Yani Miyatu and alfu, or Miyata or alfa, or Miyata, Miyati wa alfi. Rubiyatun, the rupee, the currency that's used in Pakistan and India, I believe. Rupees is the plural, Rubiyatun. The key on intelligent and the plural is the key at on. Then we have uh, the plural of uh, the key on and the key at on. The plural of both of them is the key. Uh, the key uh, does not have to mean why is that? Because it's a dip toad. Why is it dip toad? Because it's on the pattern of of a excellent musattarun lined musattarun. Uh, kumun is used for the sleeve, and the plural of kumun is akmamun, sleeves. Manaratun, minaret. 
And now we have here three, we have three nouns that are Asma'ul uh, Manqusa, or we can say defective nouns. Muhammin, Qadin, Wadin. So what will be the feminine form of Muhammin? It will be Muhammiyatun, right? So when we say feminine, the Ya will come back. Muhammiyatun. Um, lawyer, then we have Qadin, judge, and the feminine of Qadin will be Qadiyatun. We have Radin, and the feminine of Radin is Radiyatun. Then we have Wadin, and the feminine of Wadin will be Ahsantiya uh, Ukhta Wadiyatun. Okay. Then we have Mu'jamun, dictionary, and the plural is Ma'ajimu, also Mamnu min sarf on the pattern of Mafailu. And faqat means only. Alhamdulillah, we have completed our lesson number one. Bi'awnillahi ta'ala, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, when we meet again, we will start lesson number two. Barakallahu feekum. Subhanaka lahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.